Hello, this is a video for the Adobe CS project lesson number one. This should go along with the instructions that you have to show you how to do the first lesson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to open, crop, resize, and save an image in Adobe Photoshop CS6. You should have already taken or had taken a picture of yourself. That picture should be a full body photograph so that you can crop it so that it will just be your, uh, your head and shoulders. Uh, you should create a folder on your uh, computer or your USB and you should name this folder the Adobe Lesson 1. There we go. Uh, then you should put your image in there. Your image should have your um, uh, your portrait. It should be uh, renamed with your first name uh, and the words original portrait. And then you should put that inside the Adobe Lesson 1 folder. So then you should open up Adobe Photoshop and you should open that image. So you can do that in a few ways. You can go to the file menu and say open or you can just do control O on your keyboard you should be able to go to your desktop or wherever it is where you uh, where you put that folder. Open up the folder, and now you should be able to find your image. And there we go. There's my image. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, you'll notice that up at the top left, I have the tab for my image. So you can see here's the name of my image. If I have more than one image, the other ones will open in tabs over here. I'm at 25% zoom. I'm in RGB color mode. Uh, you don't have to worry about that until later. Uh, but that is how you can view the file. You can zoom by using uh, various ways. You can, for example, choose the zoom tool over here, and that will allow you to click to zoom in. Wherever you click becomes the, uh, the place where you're going to zoom. If you want to zoom out, you can hold down the, uh, the Alt key, and the Alt key should uh, make a minus sign in the magnifying glass, and that should help you zoom out. Alternately, you can use the keyboard. You can say Control minus to zoom out, or Control plus to zoom in. This might be a little difficult on a Japanese keyboard because the plus sign is located in a difficult place. But alternately, you can uh, use Control-1, and that will make the image full size. That is to say, each pixel will be represented as a pixel. Or you can say Control-0, and that will fit the image uh, inside your window so it appears uh, just about perfectly. Alternately, you can hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, and then you can use the uh, you can use the uh, scroll wheel on your mouse or the scroll gesture on your trackpad to zoom in and zoom out in that way. I'm just going to do a control zero and there we go. Now one important feature that you want to know is to know what the dimensions of your image uh, are. Uh, my image is 2448 pixels by 3264. I know this because I have set this to show me the document dimensions. It might be document sizes on yours. That's not quite as useful. But if you go to document dimensions by clicking on this arrow, you could see the size of the image. If you're not seeing this in pixels, that means that you did not change it correctly when you, uh, when you looked at the previous introduction to Adobe Photoshop video. I'll show you again how to change that. You want to go to the Edit menu. You want to go down to Preferences. You want to go down to where it says Units and Rulers. And then you want to make sure that the Units and Rulers is set to Pixels, not anything else. Once you do that and click OK, then when you go down here, you'll see the dimensions of your image uh, like this. Now, if the width of your image, the width is the first dimension, the height is the second one. If the width of your image is less than 1,200 pixels wide, then your image is not big enough and you have to get a different one. 
So make sure that you've got a full-sized image there. Make sure, of course, that you can see both your head and your feet. Uh, it should not be too close, not too far away. Uh, we are going to cut this down so only your head and shoulders are visible. Uh, so uh, that's how you know that you've got the right sized image. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to crop. We just finished viewing the file, so now we're going to crop. You will crop by going over here and clicking on the crop tool. Very simple. When you do that, you'll notice that you get a kind of an outline appearing. Let me do that again. Uh, do the crop tool. You'll notice that you get a kind of, a, of an outline here and you can see the crop marks inside there. The easiest way to crop your image is simply to click and drag inside this square. You don't have to grab the edges. You can just go uh, inside the image and you can click, let's say over here and then pull down to there. You'll make a little rectangle. And then when you let go, you'll notice that basically everything else in the image has been grayed out and you can see your head and shoulders there. Now I'm going to hit the escape key. So now I'm back in basic crop mode. It forgot what I was gonna do because I clicked the escape key on my keyboard. But once again, when you do this, you wanna make sure that you only get your head and shoulders. So you wanna begin with the crop tool by, by going someplace up to the, uh, you can go top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right, but start at one corner of the rectangle that you want to have, then you want to click and then pull down and have something like this. So you can, you've got some space above and to the side of your head, but then also you can see uh, in the cropped image, you can still see your shoulders there. So you do that. And then once you've got it right, you can move the picture around like this so that you can, you know, get the different areas inside the crop area. I'm gonna put mine back because it was good the way it was. Uh, this is actually a good way of finding out if you've got it centered correctly uh, because there's a grid here. Your eyes should be more or less in the middle of that. Probably your nose should be in the center of that. That's a good crop right there. Uh, you could also just grab the edges of this and you could make it smaller or larger. So I liked it the way it was, that's about how it was. And once you're finished, once you've got it exactly the way that you want it, it's very simple, just hit the Enter key. When you hit the Enter key, you'll notice that the rest of the image disappears. You might notice that you still have your crop marks around here. That's just because you're still using the crop tool. So in order to make those disappear, just click on another tool. The default tool is this one up here, it's the Move tool. Uh, and if you click on that, then the crop marks go away. Now you'll notice that your image appears much smaller now, but if you take a look in the tab up here, you'll notice that your image is actually uh, zoomed out. Mine is at 26%, which means that it actually can be four times larger than that. If I do control one, that's the full size right there. Uh, and actually that's almost the same as control zero. So uh, this is just about the perfect size for me. All right. so. Uh, what I've just done is that I have cropped. That is part five of, the, uh, of this uh, lesson. So we're going to go on to part six, which is resize. Now, in order to resize what you've got, you want to go to the uh, image uh, menu in the toolbar. You want to go down to image size. And here you can see, hopefully in pixels, again, it should say pixels if you change the preferences correctly. If it doesn't say pixels, then you can change the pixels right here. Uh, mine is 677 by 831. You want to make that smaller. Uh, I would like to have uh, the pixels be uh, just 200 pixels wide. So I'm going to type 200 there. You'll notice that the height adjusted automatically. Uh, that should happen all the time because you have uh, constrained your pr proportions. If you check this off, you'll notice that these constraint marks disappear. And now if you change one of these numbers, the other will not change. But you want to keep that on because it's a handy tool to have. Always constrain the proportions. So once again, I'm going to change this to 200 pixels wide. Your height might be different. You might have selected a, a little bit more or a little bit less height. 
So your height might be 220 or 280. Uh, hopefully it should be around 250, but, uh, but uh, anywhere between 220 and 280 should be fine. Uh, if you have more than that, then you might want to crop, uh, you know, uh, you might want to crop some of uh, the space from the top and the bottom. If you have less, then, well, if the picture looks okay, then I guess it's okay, but you want to have it to be about 250 if you can. So once you set the correct size, you're going to click OK. And now you have a much smaller picture. And that's the actual size. If I do a Control-1, that doesn't change anything, because that's the actual size of the image. It's not zoomed in or zoomed out. So now I've done resize. So the last step here is that I'm going to uh, save the image. And so in order to do that, I'm going to go to the file menu and I'm going to choose not save or save as I'm going to choose a special one called save for web uh, save for web gives me a great deal of control over the size and type of image so I'm going to click on that and I get a big dialog box now there's several parts to this but the two main parts are up here at the top right in which you can select the picture type uh, and its uh, options and over here at the bottom left, where you can see the size of the image. You also have a preview, which shows you the quality of it. So we're going to start by going up here to the top right. And you can see that we have a choice between GIF, JPEG, PNG, and WBMP. Uh, we're going to choose JPEG this time. Now, one thing about JPEG is that you can choose the quality. Uh, now, you'll notice that if I choose the quality to be zero, uh, that my picture gets a, uh, gets to looking really bad. If I choose 100, my picture now looks good again. Let me go back down to zero, and you'll notice that, like I said, they've got lots of, of blocks in there, lots of squares. But if we go down here to ch check out the size, you'll notice the size is really tiny. This is less than three kilobytes. Uh, if I go back up here and change the quality to 100%, that means full quality, you can see my image looks good, but now my size is bigger. It's now 37 kilobytes. Now, you can have a nice medium setting in which you can change the image quality from 100 down to about 60, for example. I'm going to choose 60 here, and you might notice that the image quality changed hardly at all. Uh, let me go back. I'll go back to 100, take a look at the image over here when I do this. And you'll see that it changed almost not at all. But you'll notice that when I set it to 60, if I go down here, now the size of my image is down to 10 kilobytes. That's about a quarter of what it was at 100%. But I haven't lost uh, really any quality at all. So 60% quality in a JPEG image, that's going to be the one that you want. So once you're finished with that, you want to click on Save. Then you want to find your Adobe Lesson 1 folder. And you want to save it, but using a different file name. Uh, notice that it still says uh, Luis Original Portrait. So you want to save this one using a different name. This, this is going to be Luis Portrait Small. So I'm going to get rid of Original there. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to add Small. Uh, now, notice that I put a hyphen here. You don't have to. It'll, it'll happen automatically if you don't. Uh, but in any case, make sure you do not replace your original portrait. Make sure it's titled Your Name Portrait Small, and then click Save. And there we go. So now if I go to my desktop and I open up the Adobe Lesson 1 folder, you'll notice that I have two images. My original is very large, uh, 2.6 megabytes whereas my small portrait is indeed very small, only 11 kilobytes. So I'm going to go back into Adobe Photoshop. And now I'm going to close this image. I can either uh, click on this little X right here or go to the File menu, and I can say Close here, or I can do Control-W on my keyboard. You will probably get a message asking you if you want to save the changes. Do not save the changes. Click no. You want to click no because if you click yes, then it's going to write over, it's going to erase your original portrait. So you don't want to do that. You want to click no.
And there we go. All right, so uh, that's all for this video guide. Uh, if you take a look at the instructions, you'll see that I ask you to uh, create uh, a, uh, another image just like this. You want to get another uh, original. It does not have to be a portrait. It can be any photo so long as it's a large photo and you can crop it down to something smaller. So you're going to save the original in there and then you're going to do the exact same thing that I did. Uh, and then uh, you're going to save that as a small version. So when you finish, you'll have these two images plus two more images from your other original photograph. And that's all for the first lesson.